Okay, so our final important topic uh, about uh, performance of hash maps is load factor and the process of rehashing. So let's go back and look at a familiar example one more time. Let's imagine that we've got a relatively small array that's set up for separate chaining. So it has m equals 4, four different buckets that we can put things in. And we'll go through our process of adding data just like before. Um, so this time we can think of that uh, compressing component of the hash processes, specifically using m equals 4, which is kind of important here. So we'll come back to that momentarily. Um, so I'm just going to go through the process here. Uh, so we're going to uh, put orange in location 2. Um, so I'm just going to add the items below the bucket to kind of indicate a list being built. Uh, and then we'll put lemon in bucket 1. So we'll put that out there. Um, then after that, we're going to put a calendar in bucket 3. So we'll put that out there. Uh, then next up is a light bulb in bucket 2. So, so we have a collision. We have to go through all the items in our, our bucket and uh, make sure that we're adding it. Uh, then we're going to put a uh, baseball in 0. No collisions there. That's great. Uh, and then we're going to put a bear in 1. So we've got a collision. We have to make sure that uh, we're not updating an item and then we'll append it on to the end. Uh, mouse will go in 0. So again, we'll go through everything that's in that bucket. Um, and then finally, an eraser goes in three. And I'm going to stop there. So we've added eight items. And uh, currently, they're uniformly distributed across all buckets. So our hash function did a pretty good job of uh, trying to minimize the amount of data that's in each bucket, of, of trying to uniformly distribute our data. OK, so in this table, we had our hash table with separate chaining. and um, we had n items and a total of m buckets. So in our specific example, we had eight items and just four buckets. Uh, so we had this case where n was greater than m. So what does that mean? Well, we've already talked about the pigeonhole principle. At least one bucket has to have more, multiple items in it. Um, so we, work, we sometimes work under the assumption of standard uniform hashing, which we'll abbreviate SUH. Uh, so the basic idea here is if we assume that our hash function does a pretty good job of kind of uniformly randomly distributing data across our buckets, uh, then it's a little bit easier to do some types of analysis. Um, so for example, we can figure out how much data is, is on it in each bucket on average. So again, our SUH assumption is that the hash function spreads data pretty evenly. So and items of data m buckets. So let's consider the fraction n over m. And that's referred to as the load factor. Okay. Um, so assuming that we have this uh, standard uniform hash function, uh, what does a load factor of 1 mean? Well, basically n over m, that the amount of data is roughly equal to, is equal to the number of buckets we have. And if they're uniformly distributed, uh, that probably means that each bucket just has a single item in it. If our load factor is less than one, hopefully we've still got some empty buckets and we don't have too many buckets with uh, more than one item with more than one collision. Um, and if our, uh, if our load factor happens to be two, that's the case we just encountered, where we had twice as much data as available locations to put it. Uh, and if it were more abstract, if it were some variable p, that would mean each bucket would have p units of data in it on average. Um, if, since we're, if we're working with real world data, there may be a few collisions. But uh, in the uh, limit sense, we could kind of expect the average to be p, assuming we've got this standard uniform hash function. So let's think of how the load factor impacts complexity. Um, OK, uh, and we'll continue with this assumption of standard uniform hashing. OK, so uh, our put operation. Well, if we have n over m units of data, um, then we may have to do n over m units of work to iterate through and possibly update a, an item in our put. Um, and in any event, we have to do at least some constant amount of, of time work to add the item on, or at least uh, look in the bucket. So uh, we'll assume our complexity is n over m plus 1. And partly the plus 1 kind of takes care of the case where n over m would be a, a fraction and rounded down to 0. Our get, exact same argument. And the remove, the exact same argument. All three of these basically are dealing with the contents of a bucket, which is essentially like dealing with our um, uh, unordered list-based map. 
Okay, so this seems less than ideal. If our load factor starts to get too high, our performance is gonna to start to degrade. And eventually, in the worst case, we fall back to the performance of our unordered uh, list. So this takes us to our, our final topic here, the concept of rehashing, something we can do to avoid this degrading uh, time complexity. Okay, so rehashing is just a strategy to improve performance. Uh, the basic idea is you monitor the load factor, and if it exceeds some threshold, you increase the size of the array. Okay. Um, so uh, a 0.75, 75% is a common choice for this threshold, and that seems uh, somewhat intuitively reasonable. So the basic idea is if you're 75% full, the likelihood of a collision is increasing. Um, Okay, so if collisions are getting likely, you should probably make more space to try and reduce the likelihood of collisions and uh, get closer to this uh, order one time complex of this constant time goal. So uh, for the, uh, the second component of this, increasing the size of the array, we can fall back to a strategy we've used in the past. We can use the array doubling strategy. Um, and the nice thing about that is we can use some of the arguments we've used in the, the past for time complexity as well. By the way, one really important thing to note here is that the overall hash function depends on m, the number of buckets. So they're kind of the two components to, to hashing an item for use in the um, array of buckets. The first item was converting it to an integer, and the, the second component of the process was mapping it to an appropriate index. And mapping it to an appropriate index actually depends on that value of m. So uh, let's go ahead and go through an example and then, uh, then we'll look at time complexities based on this approach with rehashing. Okay, we're back to our uh, familiar four buckets and uh, we will go back to uh, using a hash function with compression uh, to four buckets. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put orange in bucket two, lemon in bucket one. Uh, but this time we're applying rehashing, so we have to think about our load factor. So our load factor now is 0 0.5, 50%. We'll put the calendar in three. Um, okay, so at this point we're at 75% load. Um, so we could, uh, if we choose that as our threshold, we could go ahead and um, uh, rehash right now. So let's go ahead and go through the rehash process. So the rehash process has to create a new array of buckets. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide that in over to my left. Um, not only that, we have to take all of our existing data and put it over in our new array of buckets. Now, it's tempting to merely just move items over. The lemon was in bucket one, so let's move it over to bucket one here. But remember that its location is partly based on the uh, number of buckets available. If we change the number of buckets available, we're changing how the overall hash process works, in particular how it maps the uh, integer value to particular buckets. So we can't simply do that. What we have to do is we have to iterate through all of our data and apply our new and improved hash function. So we'll go ahead and go through the new hash function. So I find a lemon, I'm gonna, uh, I'm sorry, I find an orange, or I find a lemon, I'm gonna look up what my, uh, lemon hashes to in my new and improved table. So I'm gonna move it over to, uh, to bucket seven, which you'll be able to see in just a minute. Um, then I find an orange, so I'm gonna have to uh, figure out where it belongs in my new table. It belongs in bucket three. Uh, and then I find a calendar, which will belong in bucket two. Okay, so we have uh, mapped all of our values over. So our new and improved uh, bucket array looks something like this. And now we can continue adding items. So our light bulb belongs in bucket one. Okay, and again, we can think about our load factor. So we've got four items in eight buckets. So our load factor is 50%. Um, baseball belongs in bucket zero. Uh, okay, so now we're up to five out of eight. Uh, and now our bear belongs in bucket four. So we're at six out of eight. So we're now at the 75%. So once again, we would go ahead and rehash at this point. So how does uh, rehashing impact performance? So we'll assume that we're uh, working with standard uniform hashing. 
Um, so the get operation will generally only encounter buckets that have zero or one items in it. So assuming that we definitely have solid uh, uniform hashing, get is a constant time operation. Put, however, is a little bit more complicated. Um, now, the good news is there's a simple case. If we're not rehashing, it also is typically uh, getting to buckets that have zero or one item in it, and we can again uh, think of that as being a constant time operation. But in the other case, in, in the worst case, with rehashing, we may actually have to go through all of our data uh, and all of our buckets. So we might have to go through all of our buckets, and over the course of going through all of the buckets, we'll have to iterate through all of our data. Now, since typically the load factor is uh, greater than 0.5, it's oftentimes 0.75 or so, um, we can consider n and m to be approximately equal, and we could think of this as an order n sort of operation. Um, okay, so if that's the case, um, uh, we will double the size of our array, so we'll pay this order n operation, but then it'll give us uh, twice as much time until we have to go through it again. Um, okay, so we can kind of go through the, the same sort of pseudo argument that we did with the array doubling uh, approach when we were using array based lists. And we can say that over time, the average amount of time for an individual put will uh, tend towards one. But every once in a while, the true worst case will actually be order n. So on average, it'll end up being close to constant time, but every once in a while, there will be a, a long amount of time to go through the rehash process. Okay, so our hash table with separate chaining and rehashing, um, how does the load factor affect the operations? So uh, we can think about the true worst cases versus the average case. So the put, the true worst case is roughly order n, um, and the average case is constant time. Um, the get is constant time and constant time, and the remove is also constant time and constant time. By the way, I'm assuming that for the remove that uh, we are not decreasing the size of the hash table ever.